We have a whole... Oh, dear. <laughs> really? Who's been the worst guest? The, tr the trickiest people, I think, are comedians. When do we actually spin? <laughs> Grab the blindfold. You and I will have some private time. <laughs> Cheers. Matt, hello and welcome to Spooning With Me, Mark Wogan. It is a pleasure to have you here. It's lovely to be here. Thank you very much. Now, during the course of this, we are going to take you through a few of your food loves, mm -hmm. maybe some of your food hates. Okay. But it's a little journey that I want to take you on. Great. So, first and foremost, we know you are a man who enjoys a cocktail. So, <gasps> what have we got My favorite. there? Let me, let me just put that in front of you. Now, to the untrained eye, that might look like a Coca-Cola. Might do, but it's a Coca-Cola with lethal ingredients. So this takes me back to the 90s. Right. So we've got a Long Island iced tea here. Mm -hmm. Top shelf. <laughs> oh, yeah. All, <laughs> like they used to do in TGI Fridays. All, all the white spirits, yeah, all the way that's along. that's the one. Thank you very much. <laughs> is, it, is it a little too early for you? Uh, no, absolutely not. Is it ever no, too early? I've got a very long day ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's very is that a good one? It's really good. Now, that is when it comes to a drink. It is, it is an iron fist in a velvet glove, isn't it? Oh, it is brilliant. And it's been f long forgotten, I think. Unless you go to America, and they love it in America. I tried to bring it back in my restaurants, <laughs> but I think oh, oh, <laughs> our, customers, <laughs> oh, yes, our customers might be a bit too young. Or far too sophisticated. Maybe. Maybe. Because it is not for the connoisseur, I think. It's literally chuck everything into a glass and mask it with Coke. So, th so this, this embodies the 90s for you. Love it. What were the 90s like for you? Um, they were great. I had a great 90s. How was yours? My, <laughs> well, we, we, share, we actually share something similar that we probably did really? around the same time. Oh, okay. Which was Who? The, dip the diploma course. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, the yes. diploma course at Leith yes, School of do. Food and Wine. Yeah. So how did you end up there? Because you were... You were, you did want to be a pilot. I did, yes. Uh, well, a pilot at yes. one point. Well, look at my I mean, defensive. Thank God that didn't language. happen, but there we go. Um, so, so my night started leaving school, ended working in kitchens, um, having my own restaurant actually at the end of it. So, so I wanted to join the Air Force. Uh, I went to uni. I did a degree just because you needed a degree. I got into something called the University Air Squadron and they taught you to fly on your days off. So they you can you actually drink. fly? At a push. Okay. So <laughs> I mean, if, it might come if, back to me. I don't think it's like If the call went out by. on the transatlantic <laughs> flight. <laughs> I'd have a crack. <laughs> a couple of those. Okay. Um, so, I, so they were teaching you to, to fly on your days off. They, they also taught you to drink and socialize very well and then get up the next morning. Um, and then I realised that it's, uh, it took an awful lot of brain power, and brain power I probably don't have, to fly and think in a 3D form and do mathematical equations. So I used to come back sweating after an hour's flight and being shouted at by an instructor. And then I used to relax by going to cook for my friends at the house I shared with five other guys. Um, and at the time, Gary Rhodes was all over the TV. And we, we love Gary. To, what a, what a ledge. Uh, and we used to cook our student food in the style of Gary Rhodes for a bit of a laugh. Well, you spiked your hair up and... Well, it was just all the mannerisms okay. and the, the, you know, how he was. He was very enthusiant. Wasn't well, I, 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 very as expressive. I've said before, uh, actually, I was, uh, we had Tom Kerridge on. Uh -huh. And I said, m one of my great loves mm -hmm. is how Gary's hands moved around food. It was a beautiful like thing a dance, to watch. Wasn't it? it was all like this. Do you know, he taught me, actually, how to clean your nails in a kitchen. Half a lemon scrubbed into your nails like that, and it absolutely cleans them all up. But now that you are a uh, clean renowned, anyway. I'm to <laughs> renowned TV chef, you, you go people. for regu regular... I have people to do my nails now. I wish. So food has always been a part of your life. Yes. But obviously, like a lot of people, we mm -hmm. have certain things from our childhood that mm -hmm. might create a little trauma around food. Yeah. I think I've got one of them over here that I wanted to share with you on this plate. <coughs> so here it comes. <coughs> we have a whole, oh, dear a whole ox heart. It smells as well. <laughs> really? So why, why, I mean, I like ox heart. If it's cooked properly, it, it's- And there's the problem. There's the problem. So, <sighs> So, so, okay, so first of all, I think it was, 
I think it was probably lamb's hearts <laughs> that I had looking at this <laughs> because my <laughs> because my mum used to do stuffed lamb's hearts, not stuffed ox hearts. Yeah, because I mean, so apologies. Eat, eat a whole one of those. Holy crap! Look at that. <laughs> um, so she used to make this dish, and and I love offal. I love most offal. I don't like tripe. I can't do mm. tripe. It's for dogs. Um, <laughs> but she used to do this uh, stuffed lamb's heart dish, and it was tough as old boots. It was horrendous. Was your mother not a great cook? She was a very. She was a very. Not, she was a very good cook. She is a very good cook. Um, it was the seventies. It was the eighties. It was ready meals. It was uh, great spaghetti bolognese. Um, steak on a Saturday night, bottle of La Pierre d'Or, that sort of thing. Yeah. Hostess trolley. It was that kind of generation. Le Tour Noir, the Black Tower. Yes, exactly. I mean, if you think that back, wasn't really you think back, because so, obviously you 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 enjoy a drink. I think. I, I mean, I mean, I'm not drink. implying it's a problem. I do yes. Um, but uh, you enjoy a drink. Uh -huh. But we think about you know that is that is, I mean that is the '90s and a glass yeah. as we've established. And when we, when we were kids, when mm -hmm. we, you had those first sips, it was of those kind of wines. But then you've ended up, you ended up opening the Fox Hunter. Yes. In a town, and I think this might have been part of the problem. Right. Mildly unpronounceable. Oh, Nanty Derry. Yeah, Nanty Derry. <laughs> I mean, town is a stretch. We okay. Had six houses. But why Wales? Because I grew up there. I grew up in the uh, grew up in a place called Cumbra. Uh, it was a new town, and my dad moved us from uh, High Wycombe, where I was born, within about three or six months, I can't remember, because it was a new town, and they were offering free factory space to, for a year for new businesses, and he had a new business, and so we moved. And then we went from Cumbran to Newport, to then eventually the outskirts of Cardiff. My parents are still there. I went to uni at Oxford Brooks, Oxford Poly, um, went to London, did training, met my wife through her, my, one of my best friends, her sister. <laughs> That's another story. And we <laughs> ended up moving back to Wales because of the family network. And we saw what the walnut tree had done. Yeah. Uh, the original kind of gastropub, as they call it. Franco Terusio is this amazing place. So we thought, well, if we can get this much of their trade, then we'd be doing a nice living. And that's exactly why we ended up. And did you? We did. We did, um, but country restaurants are very, very different to city restaurants because when suddenly you get that agglomeration, agglomeration effect where you get, there's two good restaurants, let's open another restaurant. Somebody else comes along and goes, there's restaurants in there, like the Ludlow effect and things like that. Suddenly your, your pool um, of people then gets diluted and then throw Strictly Come Dancing final in the mix, throw uh, bad weather, throw good weather, throw barbecue season, and everything gets... So strictly can affect... Oh, dear God. Yeah, anything. Anything like that, big TV events, affect the country. But... <laughs> now, you, Shoot me you, now. You, you no longer have that restaurant. No. What was the decision around that? It was... We'd had it for 14 years. Um, I was in the kitchen, my wife was at the front, we lived upstairs. It was what we wanted originally. It was that, that sort of European lifestyle where you know the kids are running around and we served good food. Um, it, was, it was hectic, but we achieved that. But then after that amount of time, I was disappearing because I fell into TV. So I was paying somebody to do my job badly, as it turns out. Um, leaving everything to my wife, that relationship then, or that dynamic doesn't work. It only works when the two of you are working and pulling together. So after doing eight years of that, um, a job came along and I thought, I can't turn this down. And I was falling out of, truth be told, I was falling out of love with it because it's relentless. It's mm. hard, relentless work, as you know, yeah. in restaurants. So you're, you're one day off, you're doing the books, you're doing your washing, you're doing your orders. It's not fun. And it made us a living, but we weren't driving fast cars and going, you know. We had not two like now. <laughs> no, still not out, actually. <laughs> um, but we had two weeks off a year, and that was it. So you imagine what I was like on the plane ride on the way home, knowing that I wasn't going to get another any time off apart from a Monday for another year. It was like, kill me. So a job came up with uh, Discovery, where I was going to go away with this lunatic Kiwi guy 
Um, he was hunting, I was cooking. We went to Borneo and Mexico. And uh, where else do we go? Um, we went to Far East, we went to Northern Europe, we went to Finland, we went all over. And it was one of those jobs that I just couldn't turn down. So that was, that was a six month gig. So I thought, you know what, no, let's, let's try this, let's jump. And it was a leap of faith. But then, so like so many other things I've done, it's just, you do it blindly and with naivety. And it, sometimes it works. Now, I'm going to remove the Please ox do. heart now because it's, it's not the most pleasant thing to look at, but cooked can be delicious. Mm, I hope the kitchen can do wonders with that. I'm gonna... Now, what I've discovered mm. with people... I've never had one of these last so long, by the way. <laughs> Please, feel free. We, <laughs> we can get you another one, <laughs> No, Mr. really, I better not. <laughs> when people work as chefs, yeah. there seems to be a commonality, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. they have what can only be described as quite a ghetto palate when it comes to their <laughs> s preferred snacks. It's, it's the things, here we go. Now you, you share, ghetto palate. you share this mm -hmm. with Tom Kerridge, which is, is that the, right? the pepperami. Oh, this is the, the absolute base level of snack salamis. And now if you go to Waitrose now, they do really good Polish sausage. One of them's got cheese in it. I'm not so fan of that. Not so big on that. These are fab. In fact, can I? <laughs> yes. Because this is means. actually quite a hot now one. Now that's the spicy one. What disturbs me about the pepper army is, is that is, internal it, wrapper. Yeah, is the internal prophylactic in which it comes in <laughs> is quite revolting. I mean, as he's opened the packet here, you'll see. It smells delicious. Oh my god, it is revolting. I mean, but that does it does look like a Durex. Hmm. Correct, but um, it tastes so good. There's a lot of spice in this one. Yeah. Um, I think they're great. I mean, this is processed meat at its very finest. Ultra processed meat. Ultra processed meat. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that you like. This is really fun. Another thing that you like, which mm -hmm. I find quite extraordinary, is the ocean stick or fish stick, which you should we... be called crab sticks. No, not no more. No, not no more. <laughs> yeah, that's because, a trade description. Because there's not an ounce of crab in them. What a smorgasbord this I is. I know. But you see, the thing is, for a man who mm, is around well. <laughs> incredible food all the time, can create incredible food himself. Why do you love this? Why do chefs love? crappy food like that. I think it's probably because you open your fridge and grab it. So late at night, if there was like leftover roast chicken, I'd grab a roast chicken or grab the bits and pieces, rip the carcass apart. And you know that really nice chili sauce you can get from the Asian supermarkets and they've got little bits of, little squares of kind of crispy tofu or black beans in it. Some has got chicken powder. Chicken powder, that's another story. It'll sort of just spread it all over a cold roast chicken and eat that. Delicious. You don't want to mess around. No, it's And this, quick. this is strong flavors in your face. These I just, I've got really into because it's just protein. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff, but it's uh, serene. But it's, it's, you're wobbling it. He's wobbling it and it's got a really quite disturbing motion to it. But I love the, the natural colors. Yeah, natural. Of them. There's, no, there's nothing natural about <laughs> it. I mean, I wonder, I wonder what percentage of actual the sea mm. is in that. Well, I got quite into them because one of the shows I do is Food Unwrapped. We looked at these um, and it's, a, it's called surimi. It's a fish called surimi. It's, and it's apart from the preservatives <laughs> and the additives, um, I think it's 100% Fish. I, other than the other than the 80% <laughs> other than the 80% of additives it's I'd, 100% I'd of fish. I'd have to look at it but I think it's a low cal uh, protein snack. So are you saying you eat it for health reasons? I <laughs> I eat it for convenience reasons. And I would go and I know it's wrong and I get told off for it. But I will go to shopping and you can get these you can also get a slightly elevated version now which is cut in a very different they're just under cut on a nice angle basically. And I'll eat those as I go around shopping. Are they posh sticks? I get sticks? very funny looks though. People don't like that anymore. Is you that know when you used to go and you get a can of coke yeah. and you're just walking around the shops and or you get some nuts. I'm starving. And you eat and you graze as you go around the shop. I love doing that. Apparently you can't do that. You're not allowed not, to do that. I mean, it's, no, but I take the empty oh, packet oh, and oh, scan oh, it at the 
Mm. at the checkout. I I'm do not going to steal it. Well, you get very funny looks in Wales. Let's move those out of the way. Mm. And can can we have the blindfold brought in, <clears throat> please? Oh, oh, thrown in from the side. Is this is this still a food thing, or is this now a fetish? <laughs> So I am going to ask you to be to blindfold yourself. It looks like a really small bra. Well, I mean, you can wear it like that afterwards if you like. Okay. But if you pop that on, it really does look like a. Small... <laughs> yeah. But it is. Where'd you buy? It? I mean, I know we're in Soho, but where would you buy a blindfold like this? Well, speak, this is a... speak to Johnny. It's part of Good his Lord. private collection. Okay. Johnny, the producer, has a range of these. At Johnny home. knows what he's doing. Okay. Right. The first. Slightly the plate unnerved. is coming in now. If you just make room, mm -hmm. there we go. I'm going to unveil this now mm -hmm. for, the, for the viewer. Spicy pepperoni. And do you, want, do you want to take a little sip of water before, <laughs> just to clear yeah. the palate? Because okay. like, this is the section in which we are going to challenge your palate. Okay. Mm. So in front of you now, mm. there are two spoons. Okay. On those spoons, are something that you've talked about in the questionnaire. Okay. And I'm going to feed it to you now. <laughs> it is a fetish. Are you ready? Yeah. Open wide. Wider. There we go. Now, tell me what you're tasting. Tell me what the experience is, the textures. Mm. Oh my God, I know it. <laughs> Do you love it? It's quite a mouthful. Thank you. What are you experiencing there? Come oh on. Oh my God, this is so Give weird. Give us some words. Because I actually have no idea. I'm, I mean, I recognize it, and if you told me, I'd go, God, of course it is. Um, slightly acidic. Um, oh, I want it again. I mean, it's kind of delicious. It's kind of delicious. You can take the blindfold off now. Really? Yeah. No, uh, hang on, hang on, because I want to guess. You want me to guess what it is? Well, I mean, you don't have to. Oh, but the fact that y you've you've enjoyed it. Oh. So it is. Yeah, it's raw ceviche, ceviche with your least favorite ingredient of sea buckthorn. Ah, uh, you see. Yeah, what? but that's the pepper army. Is shall I take this off completely? Yeah, well, you can take it off now. Um, sea buckthorn. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, you see. Going to my argument that there is no such thing as a bad ingredient, you've just had it cooked it's for you badly. It's just overused, and everyone gets excited about it. I just, it's like, why? It's just orange. But in here, it's delicious, because it's being hidden by delicious scallops. <laughs> <laughs> and those nice kind of acidity, there's sort of, clearly there's, there's a bit of chili in there, there's probably lime juice or something, lemon juice. It's really good. Now, but it, I wouldn't know it was in there. So... Would you eat that saying that you hate sea buckthorn? Definitely. But I wouldn't eat a sea buckthorn panna cotta or something like that. <laughs> Bore off. Right, so we have mildly changed your opinion. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's see what we're doing now. We're going to move that one nice out of the way. Very nice, good. I'm going to pop that over there. Small bar. It's actually very good, that, because usually you can see under them. That's why we got that mm. one. It's not either. Now, in your shop round the corner, in your now new day job, <laughs> as how should one put it, the thinking person's James Martin, <laughs> there does seem to be <laughs> there does seem to be a sort of mild rivalry with weekend chefs. Um, what, is, what is that about? Because there's, there's viewing there's, figures. The, Can we stay on air? <laughs> Can we pay our mortgages, please? Thanks very much. Because there's, there's your good self, yeah. there's, there's James, who, yeah. who used to be where exactly. you are. Doing exactly the same thing on ITV. Exactly the same thing on ITV. After wanting to leave, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, then there's Mr. Rimmer mm -hmm. on Sunday. Funny man, great name. <laughs> He's one of my very good friends. I love Simon. But he, but but I mean, you do you lot occasionally do have a dig at each oh, other? Oh, totally, for sure. But then that's just it's just kind of friendly rivalry. So you do actually all get on. Yeah, yeah, very well. As long as you've got the biggest viewing figures. Exactly. <laughs> In the pecking order of getting on. Yes. <laughs> and, and are you loving doing it as a oh, job? Does it look like I do? Yes. I hundred percent have a ball. It's so much fun. What's the best bit about it for you? Well, it starts on a Friday night when you have to do your research on your guest because it makes you invested. 
and you do hours and hours of reading, you go on, you can sort of scour YouTube and look at things. You can go to Instagram. Uh, it's quite a good one to find out what they've been doing that week. Is there any interest or stuff like that? So, for example, I always give this this um, this example. Someone like Pixie Lot. I'm nearly fifty, and I'm thinking, what the hell have I got in common with someone like Pixie Lot? And then you do your research, and you go, she's famous for a reason because she's really interesting, and she's had a really interesting life, and she's very talented. Uh, and that's, so, I like to be surprised by the guests. So that's the one thing. And then we do the rehearsal. Sorry, but who who was your biggest surprise as a guest? Who was the one that you just thought, oh, I'm not sure about this, and they absolutely oh, blew you away? The old school pros, like Cliff, Sir Cliff. Now, you know, other than Devil Woman and Wired for Sound, never been a big fan, you know, hand on heart. Um, but he was so disarmingly lovely. And he's one of those old school pros that would go around and meet the crew, he'd thank them all, he'd chat to them. You get some sort of younger people coming in, whether it's, you know, some actor, actress, EastEnders, whatever. Not particularly bothered. They come in, do the job, clear off. Uh, but when you say, so Barry Humphreys is another one. Came in, just charmed everyone. And made everyone laugh their socks. It, oh, off. so funny. So... Who, who's the worst? Who's been the worst guest? The, tr the trickiest people, I think, are comedians. Are they? Yeah, I think they're. I think a lot of them are scripted funny. A lot of them are very clever people. If they weren't comedians, they'd be doctors or lawyers or accountants or whatever. I think they, they, it's that level of intelligence. Um, but very often, you can't have a natural flow of conversation. You can, you can have a chat and then they'll give you an answer and stop. Um, or they'll try and steer you into asking them that question, which they can give give a funny punchline that's been rehearsed and rehearsed. And if you do your homework on a Friday night, you'll very often hear the same speech given by the same people the next day. Whereas, am I talking too much? Yes. No, no. Whereas uh, someone like Tom Allen, who is just the naturally the funniest guy in the room, and sharp, and everything you look at has had a different way of looking at it, and they're the funny comedians. You cook live. Mm. Have you ever knowingly put a dish up in front of someone that you know is inedible? <laughs> never, never inedible. There are, there are levels of this is great and this is like, yeah, it's telly. <laughs> so never inedible. Some things are obviously better than others. Um, I can't think of a dish right now, but we have, I, so I'll write them in the week, be it on a train or in a plane or something like that. We're going on a Friday and rehearse. And very often, not very often, very often we change it because it, either it doesn't work or it needs tweaking or there's too much going on or something like that. So by the time we get to live, it's usually ironed out. Sometimes we'll change it completely. The other day I, I was doing this Portuguese coffee steak and I, on paper it sounded like traditional because it is. It sounded, it's quite interesting. Interesting wasn't good. So we lost it completely. So never inedible. But, but sometimes we've had people um, on the show, some great chefs, and you go, are you serious? This is proper emperor's new clothes and stuff. You know, you've just made Marmite. This is the best chef in the world made Marmite, and he gave seven pages of ingredients to the home ex, who slaved over it for about five days to make Marmite. And he said, it's good, isn't it? I said, it tastes like Marmite. And there are factories that make Marmite. And my, life's too, my life is too short to make Marmite. So there's certain things that people, chefs, shouldn't bother with. And you have a lot of returning chefs mm. coming on. <clears throat> yeah. And a lot of them are colleagues mm -hmm. and friends mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there any chef you've had on that you're thinking, we're never having them back? <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. You don't want to name but do, names. But do you, get, do you get to choose? I get to go, no, you don't get to choose. You can have an opinion, for sure. Um, you can't just not like somebody. Mm. You can, you can, you know, maybe they're not sparky enough. Because telly's a, it's a very kind of, you know, polarising thing. Um, people either love you. I had a woman came up to me the other day. I was doing a demo and she said, I come to see you because I hate you on television. <laughs> I went, I'm sorry. Is this a charm offensive? She said, I hate you on TV, but you're much better in real life. I said, right, thanks. So it polarises people. So some chefs are very, they can be 
fantastic cooks, not necessarily great at communicating. Uh, but yeah, we have a few. Now, talking of edible, mm -hmm. it's blindfold time again. Brilliant. So Put pop on. that back on. He's, you seem very at ease with this blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I'm heading into my 50th year. I need to try things. Mm. <clears throat> So again, I'm putting two spoons in front of you. <laughs> yeah. I need you to open wide. Here comes the train. A little bit wider. Oh. There we go. Now again, what are we what are we feeling? What's the textures? What are the flavors? Oh my god, this is so annoying. Okay, that's really that's spicy. Super spicy. Mmm. Oh my God, bread. Are you sure about bread? It's very hot. Um, Any other flavors? Edging towards the sea, maybe? What's that drying <clears throat> taste that's sucking? Anchovy. Anchovy? Yes. Anchovy chili. And there's something. Whip your, whip your blindfold off. Have a look at it. There's something now. that's drying out my mouth, which is. Dunk fat potato. Oh! Potato. <laughs> yeah. So we tried to put all your favorite ingredients on one spoon. There. Nice. That's really good. Is it amazing? Put a blindfold on and can't taste potato. That's that the whole pathetic? thing. Well, I mean, you're not the only one. Good. Put it that way. I bet somebody will really I mean, good at it. Arguably, given what you do for a living, you should, <laughs> you should be better at this than you are. But don't worry about it. Um, that's really nice. What are you talking about? Duck fat. Potatoes. Fat potato, a little bit of anchovy, and some pickled red chili. That's like a perfect canapé. Well, there we go. We have ended on a perfect canapé for Matt Tebbit. That's I really can't good. thank you enough for being a part of Spooning with me, Mark Wogan. Thank you very much. When do we actually spoon? <laughs> over here. <laughs> Don't There's a this. lovely sofa over there. <laughs> Grab the blindfold. You and I will have some private time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> now, finally, just before you go, last week, in that exact chair, we had Tom Kerridge, okay. who had this to say. Right. So Tom, coming up next week, we've got Matt Tebbit on. Yeah. You got any good Matt Tebbit stories? Because uh, let's face it, he's a bit of a rogue. <laughs> he is a bit of a rogue. He, he loves a beer. He comes and presents Pub in the Park for us a few times. Uh, and he does enjoy um, hanging with the guests in the VIP tent, having a couple of lagers. That would be fair to say. He's great, Matt. He always brings brilliant energy. He, he he's always comes across as someone who's absolutely loving life and what he does. And he's great. So, yeah, I could, I mean, he loves a beer at a festival. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I'm going to have on my grave? Yeah. He loves a beer at a festival. Yeah. It'll be on your tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. Any good Tom Kerridge stories in return? Tom. I worked with Tom years and years ago. We were out on the road and we got into a bar late and it was 5 to 11, something like that, a hotel bar. And this was when Tom was drinking. And in the time I picked up my pint and had a this much he'd had two and then we were ordering more and it was like the guy was inhaling it it's incredible um yes yeah, so um that and uh, i had the most incredible experience of the hand of flowers just brilliant 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 cook lovely down-to-earth guy he's amazing next week my guest in that chair yeah. is claudia winkleman <gasps> great fringe great fringe sexy fringe any questions for Claudia? Anything you'd like Claudia I'd, to answer? Oh, I like, got excited. I'd like to know when she gives the awards out at the Fortnum and Mason's Awards and other awards I've seen her, she always looks a bit tipsy. Is that an act or is she? So is she, does she get drunk at awards ceremonies? Yeah, before she gives the awards out. We will ask. She's very funny and very slick and always looks like she's having a ball. We shall ask that on your Great behalf. Fringe. Big love and big thanks to Matt Tebbett for taking part. Of course, you can see him every Saturday morning cooking up a storm. Now, next week, we're moving from Saturday mornings to Saturday evenings. Yes, we have the strictly legend that is Claudia Winkleman joining us for a solid spooning. And don't forget, you can follow me at Spooning with Mark Wogan through all the usual social media channels. Plus, you can watch the full episodes on YouTube. That's all for this week. See you next time. <laughs>